festival is celebrated on this day as newly harvested paddy corn is brought home from fields and given plants. Your
our manager to offer him a bouquet of flowers. Thank you. 
40 days and 40 nights. Pray to God to be blessed with a child. But this side Anne, not knowing where husband had gone, was praying fervently for her husband Joseph's letter. And also was ardently desiring for a gift of child. See what happens now. Dear God, most compassionate and merciful, who I have just come, look favorably on this servant. O oh God of our fathers, bless me and hear my prayer, as thou did bless the womb of Sarah and gave birth to his son Isaac.
sons of Israel. The child men sits on the steps of the temple and did not come back to her parents. Her parents were surprised. This was the sign of her holiness. Child Mary, dwelt in the temple till the age of twelve. Child, now that you have come to the age of twelve, we must get you wet. Let us obey God's plan in all the ways possible. Thus, young men grew up in faith and fear of God. She always obeyed her elders and spent her days working and praying. As she was in her household work, one day, into Gabriel in prayer to her.
I want, because I am a storyteller, I want to tell you two stories. And with that, I will end. But I will not make it easy and simple. I will tell the story and ask you a question. Just to make sure that you are listening intently. Whoever answers will get a prize. Are you okay? So my message consists of three We have to invite three scenes from the life of Mother Mary. The first scene is creativity. Mother Mary was very creative in her approach. Now here comes the story. Are you listening? Okay. For a time, in an old Italian village, there was a filthy old ugly merchant. He was so rich. He had lent money to a lot of people. In the same village, there was also a poor merchant who had a beautiful daughter. Now this rich ugly merchant wanted to marry that young god. So what he said, he called all the elders of the village and told them, see this man owes me a lot of money but I want to help him. So I have a proposal to make, he said. They were standing on a pebble strewn path. A lot of pebbles were there. So he called the elders of the village, this merchant, the man who owed him money and his daughter and he said, See, I have two handbags here with me. I am going to bend, pick two pebbles. One white pebble and one black pebble and put it in each of the bags. I want a daughter here to come forward and pick anyone. If she picks the white pebble, I will cancel all the debt. And she doesn't have to marry me. If she picks a black pebble, again I will cancel all the debt. But she will have to marry me. But what should happen, let the gods decide, he said. And the elders felt, well, that's a nice proposal. He is ready to let go of all the debt and also willing to marry the daughter. So when nobody was looking, this old merchant bends down, picks two black pebbles and puts in each of the bags. Only the girl sees it, nobody else sees it. Now, if you were to be in that position, what would you do? Any response? Anybody? Any creative answer? Anybody wants to answer? Okay, we have somebody here. Do we have one more mic? My name is Sucheta and I would either expose him in front of the elders by asking him to show which pebbles he is put in the bag. Uh, by doing this, uh, he is going to show the pebbles in which he has in the bag. So he is going to either get caught and uh, the elders will either punish him for praying uh, to the form of worship or they will make him let go of the dead. Wonderful answer, Sushita. Wonderful answer. Now, the problem with that answer is by exposing the merchant, the debt will not be cancelled. The villagers will know that the merchant is a chief. But the conditions that he had put were different. The conditions were she has to pick one of the pebbles. If she picked white pebbles, she doesn't have to marry. If she picked black pebbles, she has to marry. And in both cases, he would cancel the debt. But for that, he has to pick. Now this is one of the responses where you pose the merchant. Any other response you can think of. Why 
One is expose the vulture. What else can you think of? You could pick up a white feather from the ground and act like you picked it from the back. See, one more, one more response. You can slowly bend down, pick a white feather and then act as if you took it from the back. But everybody is watching you. So that is not a possibility. The merchant is also watching you. Think. There is no right or wrong answer. Any answer is right. Did you understand the story? So what is the response? What would you do? Okay, we have one more person. Now that takes a lot of confidence to stand up and answer. Please come. What is your name? Raymond. Raymond, what, what would you do? Uh, I would first fall unconscious, behave like I am unconscious. As you said, there are many pebbles on the floor. I would pick a white pebble. Wonderful. The name of this is, but she would fall unconscious. And then when she is falling down, she would pick a white pebble and then get up. And then, that's a good one. Good one. But I'm telling you what this girl in the story does. She says, yes, I am okay to play by that group. She agrees to play by the group and she steps forward, puts the hand in one of the bags, takes out the black pebble, but accidentally drops it down. Because she knows they were standing on the pebbles to a path. Now everybody wonders which pebble fell down. She tells the elders, don't worry, check the other bag. If there is a black one, then I would have to the white. If there is a white one, then I would have to give the black. So she finds a creative response. So thanks to Reverend Ian Vijayda. Thank you very much. Now the moral of the story is very simple. In life, we will always come across situations okay, where, see, we think as if there is no way out. But as long as we are creative, as long as we are able to understand the situation that we are in, we will be able to exploit to our advantage. Never give it, never surrender, but think. So creativity is one of the virtues that I wish that you cultivate as you grow. That is a very important virtue. Second important quality that we can learn from Mother Mary is Mother Mary was committed to her promise, committed to her vocation. What did she do? When she said yes to the plan of God, she never backed out even once. It was not easy, but she stood strong. And the third important quality that I wish that you cultivate as you grow up is the virtue of conviction. See, it's very important that we develop values in life. Have a sense of what is right, what is wrong. Unfortunately, we live in a country that, you know, the, that is not so favorable to people who think differently, who act differently, who profess a different faith. But we as youngsters today have a vision of cultivating values of unity and diversity, learning to respect each other, promote each one's sensibilities, and most importantly, dignity of difference. We have to find the dignity to be different and then celebrate these differences. So on this special day, I would like to uh, first of all thank you for inviting me here and then giving me this opportunity to uh, address you. I think when I go back from here, I feel so happy that I got to learn from your performances and the way everything was so meticulously planned, where you sit, where you stand, how you address. So it just means that you are 
in the right place and the right people who are guiding you. So a quick salute to all the teachers here who are guiding, guiding you. And happy congratulations to you for learning from the wonderful teachers that you have. I wish you all the best. May you have a wonderful year ahead and may you grow up to be successful women. Happy face of Alameda again. Thank you very much. I kindly request the Honourable Chief Guest to stay back to receive the present of token of love from the manager. Thank you, sister. Every program has a beginning, just like our beginning.